Hi, my name is Gail Rubin. And yes, I am a breast cancer survivor. You ever get mad at your genes? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm actually talking about the gene pool, not when you can't fit into your blue jeans. My mother developed breast cancer at the age of 47, when in the 1970s, I was out of high school a year or so. And the thing that was available for her was mastectomy. And Thank God, Mom is still alive. She's 83 now, so. Wow. And she'll be here next week. She's still in Florida. Darn. <laughs> but, uh, and I followed suit. You can't get away from your genes. At the age of 50, I developed breast cancer. Because of my family history, I was getting regular mammograms, and it was caught very early, thank God. The Mammogram showed suspicious microcalcifications, and they wanted me to come back and have a follow-up, so I did. And then they said, we want to do a biopsy. Yeah. And I was training at the time to do my first triathlon at the age of 50. <laughs> and they said, you won't be able to exercise for a few days. And I was like, I was exercising every day, getting ready for this triathlon. So I said, sorry, I'm going to have to wait till after the triathlon. It was a few weeks away. So July 1st, I went in and had the biopsy. And then they call you on the phone and they say, you must come in to get your results. And then you know it's not good news. But they were very gentle breaking the news. They kept asking me if I had any questions. They gave me all of these different options to pursue. They said you could have a lumpectomy, you could get a mastectomy, just get the whole thing cut off. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, it was ductal carcinoma in situ, zero uh, stage. So it hadn't become invasive. And I was like, I'd like to keep my breast, thank you very much. And had the lumpectomy followed by radiation treatment. Six weeks of radiation, driving to the center, getting radiated, driving back. After a while, I started getting very nauseous about the whole thing. Uh, taking the drugs to deal with anti-nausea, and that was good. And after six weeks, I got to ring the bell, which meant I was done. And that was one of the best days. I still tear up when I think about it. And after my surgery, I was blown away by the love of family and friends coming together to bring dinner to our house every night and visit with us. And one girlfriend who had had surgery a year or so before showed me her scar just to prove that, you know, you get beyond this, and you do. Still, driving in my car, I would find myself on an emotional ro roller coaster, sitting at red lights and bursting into tears. You, but you get past it. You know, it just wasn't fair though, you know? I, I eat right, I exercise, I recycle, <laughs> <laughs> and I still got cancer, so you can't beat your genes. And I am a yoga and Pilates instructor in my spare time at the YMCA, and I found that the folks at the Y, my students were very supportive, they were all like, you come back as soon as you can. And, and in fact, I did go back pretty quickly. And I got to tell you, yoga is a wonderful treatment. You, you're stretching, you're moving, you're, you're getting your lymph moving through your system. So absolutely check that out. And really, this brush with cancer has affected the course of my career. I come from a public relations and event planning background. And I wrote a book called A Good Goodbye, Funeral Planning for Those Who Don't Plan to Die. <laughs> because, you know, you really become aware of your mortality. And it's so beneficial to help your family know what you might want done to celebrate your life. Not if, but when that time comes. But hopefully, we get past our cancer and we do go on to live long and prosper as as Mr. Spock says, and I'm very fond of saying and writing in my book, and I, and I am a, a certified celebrant to help create those really meaningful, memorable ceremonies. But I wish for all of you that we stick around a good long time, stay healthy, be happy, 
and live long and prosper. <laughs>